How Long Who as a company has been an absolute delight, giving us models with great sculpting, really good paint apps, and yet which are shockingly affordable. They somehow have a magical way of knowing just what models to offer, either one that's a pleasant surprise, one that many of us have wanted for a long time but been neglected by the market and often bolt. For me personally, models like Pentaceratops, Uranosaurus, Edmontonia, Apatosaurus have been sheer delights, and this time it's Dilophosaurus. Dilophosaurus is a popular dinosaur that somehow eluded new offerings for the longest time. The general public knows it best from Jurassic Park. But if you're as old as I am, you know it from way back when it was just another carnosaur with crests. I've personally wished for more Jurassic Predators, and especially an updated Dilophosaurus, and now Haolongku has delivered. The name Dilophosaurus means two-crested lizard, and it's obvious why. It comes from the Greek di, meaning two, lophos, meaning crest, and sauros, meaning lizard. It seems like a trope to have Dilophosaurus come in pairs, from the Carnegie collection to the Sideshow Maquette, which some might argue looks suspiciously like what we have today. The standing one is, I estimate, about 19.5 cm or 7.7 inches through the centra. while the sitting one is about 21 centimeters, or 8.3 inches. Dilophosaurus has been estimated to have been about 7 meters, or 23 feet, which puts this pair at 1 to 35 for the standing, and the sitting at 1 to 33. Now that's just based on length. Given how natural the length differences look, with very similar bulk in each, I'm happy to think of these as being around 1 to 35, which is yet another thing that Haolongku does for us. And here, we have the Wonder Artistic Models 1 to 35 Humanoid for a comparison. Now, the colour. Haolongku again offers two colour variants, the blue pair and the red pair. And since I never ever want to look at another brown-based theropod again, let alone two, it was a no-brainer to go for the blue, and I'm very happy with my decision. The standing one is slightly more, shall we say, ordinary, being a typical brown with some reddish highlights in the crest. Nevertheless, it's still very well painted. But the sitting one, whoa! Now there's been a trend to give dinosaurs this kind of brilliant coloration, and the latest I know of being the Linghu Studio Cryolophosaurus, and here I'm glad to see it in this 1 to 35 model. Not only are the colors beautiful, the blending of them is wonderful. The crest is a brilliant orange, and the colors are reminiscent of their much earlier work, such as the Cacarodontosaurus. Now let's take a closer look, starting at the head. The most obvious feature are these two nasal lacrimal crests. As their name suggests, the crests are formed from the nasal and lacrimal bones. And as a reminder, these are the bones we're talking about. This in fact is similar to Allosaurus, with its lacrimal and nasal bones forming the cranial ornamentation. In Dilophosaurus, the modification is a lot more dramatic. Traditionally, Dilophosaurus heads were reconstructed with a pair of thin brittle crests that sat quite separate from the antorbital fenestrae. However, recent work by Marsh and Rowe in 2020 made the true picture clearer. As best as I can describe it, the crest begins with a small ridge on the nasal process of the premaxilla here. Then it continues with the dorsal-ventral expansion of the nasal and lacrimal, and ends with the posterior process behind the eye. The following Brian Eng illustrations make things a lot clearer. Instead of this traditional reconstruction, you see now more complexity, with the AOF communicating up into the crests. 
we don't have the top, so we don't know how far upwards these extended, but perhaps they look like this. With added keratin, they may have been even larger and more robust if you consider the casks of cassowaries, which are not delicate, and which external form with the keratin don't just follow the shape of the underlying bone. Now this is the more modern interpretation that Haolongku has opted for. You see here how the crest starts in the premaxilla, rises up over the nasolacrimal area, and then ending here in what I just see as a posterior process. In the standing one, there is some differentiation of colour in the crest, though not garishly so. The paint application is really good, not just here, but also throughout the face, with plenty of subtle complexity even at this small size. How small? Well, for reference, here's an almond. Then here's the sitting one, with a lot more colour. I'm especially loving the crests here, the fades in the face, and how the face actually ties in the orange of the crests and the beautiful blue-green of the rest of the body. It's certainly what I'd expect if they serve a display function. I really love how different in coloration they are, hinting at a male-female pairing here. Being more colourful, the sitting may be the male, which figures the lazy male asleep for the hunting, awake for the food, while the female does all the work. Now the jaws are interesting too. Notice how the premaxilla articulates with the maxilla, and the junction creates this downward kink right at the front, a subnarial gap and this results in a diastema in the tooth row. You see this in other pteropods like the Spinosaurids. The modern reconstruction isn't as dramatic as in the older ones, but still present. And you see that in our Haolongku. In addition, also note the inferior curve of the jugal, creating a rather sigmoid inferior margin. And this too is respected in the Haolongku. The slenderness of the mandible is very clear to see, especially in the front area. It was such a delight to see a non-articulated jaw for once. Given the slenderness of this animal, an obvious seam would have really ruined the aesthetics for me. Fineness of the detail can be seen in these teeth, these wonderfully delicate tines in the back of the head, and the carefully painted eyes. And gone are the cartoonish eyes we've seen in several offerings. And of course, the likeness of that facial scalation. So Haolongku really has come a long way in accuracy compared to its earlier efforts such as the Allosaurus. And now, the body. In general, the body is pretty well known. As delicate as this looks, it's hard to believe that Dilophosaurus was once the largest land animal in North America during the early Jurassic and here the form is captured very nicely. You see the long slender neck here. And moving down, the general slenderness of the animal is well captured. Again, just look at all the detail. all the tiny scales. The arms are long and slender. There are four fingers, with the fourth being vestigial. It looks almost missing on the sitting one. 
it's a little more obvious on the standing. But also on the sitting if you squint. And then the hind limbs. And you'll see that the scalation is also very fine here such that I really think Haolongku is going to eventually reach the standard set by PNSO. And finally, you get the very long tail. So just a quick once over of the standing, and here you'll see the very fine scale detail again. You'll also appreciate the subtle complexities in the paint application. The brown has many different layers and mixes, and the markings all flow into it very naturally. And even though I'm sick of stripes in pteropods, the way that Haolongku has done this so delicately applied, with a very nice fade in the sides, it's just too winning to complain about. But when we look at the sitting, you can now see that the colour, and the blends of colour, is such a very different palette. Just look first of all at that pleasing colour, and then these beautiful fades. With the incorporation of natural looking markings in the back, Ties and down the tail here, that subtle infusion of colour is just lovely. Having two of these in very different poses and colours really make for an exciting pair. They offer a variety of positions and each of them look really good, but together create the kind of day in the life scenario I really love. Now, let's get to some comparisons. First of all, we have my Wild Safari Dilophosaurus, which is my most updated one till now, with such a wonderful, beautiful sculpt. You can see it's still very good, including even that vestigial fourth metacarpal. And those posterior processes. But our Haolongku now has much more generous expansions and look more rugged. I thought it'd be nice to see how Jurassic Mega Predators went from this to this. Here's the PNSO Allosaurus. The 
Then in the Cretaceous, we have our bully boys, the PNSO T-Rex Wilson, and Cameron. And I think you can see just how monstrous these look compared to the Dilophosaurus. And how predator size have evolved over millennia. Unfortunately, I don't have much from the Kayenta formation. On the topic of slenderness, I still do have this favourite from Wild Safari, the Coelophysis. And only very reluctantly, I'm going to give you a sneak peek at another review I've been putting off for a long time. This very cute 1 to 35 Scutellosaurus by Alexa Tudorova. It's a present from a friend of mine. So that's it for this review. I think you can see that Haolongu has improved by leaps and bounds. In terms of anatomical closeness, delicacy, detail, and colour application, plus the bonus of an affordable price, they really have hit the Goldilocks zone for many collectors. This Dilophosaurus continues a running record of offering the most welcome animals, and they really have my respect and admiration. And while Haolongu has been hit and miss with its pteropods, this Dilophosaurus proves, I think, that their pteropods are catching up to their herbivores. I look forward to their next offering. Now let me know what you guys think of the Haolongus you've purchased, this one if you have it, and I'll see you in the next video.